What's up guys, Chris here, back again with another video on the channel. Today's video, I wanna talk about the market and it's obviously rising right now. Now, we had obviously a rebound from the market crash that we had uh, last night. Uh, now, when you're watching this video, it's gonna be interesting because I believe it's on the Wednesday, so the crash really became like Monday night, you know, early Tuesday morning. Uh, but then the market obviously has risen up again. And I just want to give my thoughts to you guys on where the market's going to go over the next couple of days, where I think it could go. Um, and just give you guys a couple of tips on, you know, a couple of different scenarios and stuff like that. So if you guys are enjoying my 21 content, drop a like on the video. Let's hit 50 likes on it. I would appreciate it. Com uh, subscribe to the channel as well. And get involved with the free Discord and get involved with the Twitch channel as well. Uh, the free Discord will have trading tips and stuff like that in it very, very soon. Get involved with it. You also know when I go live on Twitch, when I upload to YouTube, etc. So, let's get involved with the video right now. Uh, right now, and you would have seen this in the Road to Glory episode, but we traded a lot today with um, Chem Styles and position changes. Uh, Rashika was a position change uh, player, and then we got uh, like Promise, Lacazette, Ricardo Pereira, those kind of cards on Chem Styles. Uh, I actually bought two Umakanos. Now, I'm somebody that doesn't like to invest in out-of-pack stuff, even though it does work, obviously. Uh, I just don't like the feeling of, like, players, you know, I'm have this is like 280,000 coins that I'm, like, putting towards these players. And, you know, wh whether or not it's going to go up, you know, hopefully initially tomorrow it goes up. Uh, looking at the team league predictions, it doesn't look like there's going to be that many good center backs which is obviously going to help this guy. I mean, he's going to be the go-to option, I think, for a lot of people. From what I've heard, this guy's a beast. And then I've also gotten these four Laurentes, which I'm still trying to sell from that market crash uh, last night. Now, I have a lot of people telling me, you know, when should I sell my players? When should I sell my teams, etc. Well, I would say you guys probably want to get out of a lot of your... Uh, starter teams, at least by Thursday night before the global release. Now, here's why, right? You know, you can go to any pretty pretty much starter team player. You know, let's just say I'm going to look at, you know, Tomori here. Let me see if this actually proves my point. Um, all right. So on Monday, October 5th, this card is 7.8 average listing, 8.1 on the Sunday. If you look at yesterday's graph, all right, he was 6.7. He went down to 5.1. He kind of went back up to about 6.7. But the day before, he was 8.4. Now, here's what you'll see every single time these low-rated cards, these starter team players, get supply. You're always going to see them dip, but you'll always see them rebound, obviously, because they still cater to a certain percentage of the FIFA base that is coming onto the game for the first time, obviously. So you will see a rebound in cards, but every single time that you see these cards drop, it's going to be lower and lower and lower. So that's why I'm telling you guys, I think before Friday... When all these packs are getting ripped open, we've got ones to watch that day as well. Now, I don't think, you know, that the actual, I think around ones to watch could be a little tricky, but I don't think there's going to be a crazy crash then. I think it's going to be when the full uh, release comes out. I think it's going to be a combination of people panic selling, plus also people getting onto the game for the first time and opening up packs and stuff like that. And then right after, in my opinion, you know, we're going to get the ones to watch team. We're going to get, obviously, packs. Whether or not we're going to get lightning rounds or not, we're not too sure yet. But for the most part, we are going to get some sort of promo packs, probably 15Ks or something like that. And, you know, the one Swatch team will come out. Uh, the market should do very well on Friday night and Saturday. Based off last year, if you look at any card from last year, let me look at a guy like Neymar. Um, you know, obviously, graphs are a little bit different this year. But if I take, if I take you through uh, the FIFA 20 Neymar... Uh, and the graph that he showed. So let me go first three months here. Just so I can show you guys. Okay. And then you've got here. He obviously it's a little bit. Alright. So the 27th is the full edition. Which is when, you know, the 9th is. 7.13. It start. It kind of kickstarts him up, right? Millions of new people come onto the game. Guys like this go up in price. And he obviously keeps rising into Black Friday. Uh, now, a lot of these cars, these Neymars... You know, if you look at the, you know, popular page on Fuppin, if you guys don't want to sell the cards like, uh, you know, Werner, potentially, if you don't want to sell, you know, Rashford, uh, Sané, uh, Sun, right? Sun's getting a team of the week tomorrow. He should go up out of packs. Or today when you're watching this video, Conte, um, you know, Mbappe, De Bruyne, 
you know, Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, all of these types of cards. These are the highest tier players. They are the cards, and somebody put this quite perfectly, actually, in my stream. As time goes on, 90% of the market is irrelevant to people for buying teams, and only 10% people are putting their coins into, and that's why the market rises, uh, especially after, you know, the full edition, because that 10% of players that are usable for FUD Champions teams, that's the players that are always getting bought up, and those are the players that usually get the least amount of supply. So a guy like Steven Bergerwein, uh, might get less supply than a guy like Chan, obviously. Now, a guy like Chan right, is a perfect example of a starter team squad, okay? And if you look at his graph on Monday night, he was 3,100 coins. He then dropped all the way to 14, rebounded 23, went down again at 16, and now he's chilling about 21. So this is like a good point, right? Any of these starter team squads, any of these lower rated, now obviously that is for the most part, there's guys like Alfonso Davies where, in my opinion, you don't sell that card, right? There's cards like that where, you know, it will rebound and it will probably rise higher because he has that much demand. But guys like Chan, guys like, um, who else is on this list that's on the popular page? You know, even like an Emery, Chan's going to go down during supply on Friday. Uh, Carrasco's going to drop. Pepe's going to drop. Tomori, um, you know, Philippe Anderson. I think with guys like Regulon, okay? If you want to take the coins on these guys before Friday, I would really think about it. These ones to watch cards. Here's the reason why, in my opinion. Regulon is going to be a guy that people don't just buy because they go into people's teams. It's because he's also going to get a ones to watch. Now, there's this, a scenario this year where we're going to have two ones to watch teams. So, say a player like a Gareth Bale or maybe a Regulon does it get into team one what's going to happen is that team that player is going to have another four to five six days of supply before they get a one to watch the following week so whoever invested in that card prior will sell it because they're going to be impatient they're not going to want to wait a whole week of holding that card uh and they're going to obviously lower his price they're going to just undercut like crazy to get out plus the supply that's going to come out on friday as well it could make the market with guys like regulon kind of you know tricky with that so if you want to take the coins on this in the hype i would um a guy like aki i don't like for an investment as well i think with these price range cards depending on what ea do i have a feeling that they're gonna wait for guys like ake uh even if jota goes up again right these are the type of cards fred they're gonna i think i honestly wait till friday to see what kind of supply we get uh, and how much these kind of cards get affected now I'm just giving you guys my overall market thoughts here, where I think the market's going to go. So you can expect Thursday night, depending on what time you are, it's going to be Thursday night Eastern, kind of like where we saw the market start to dip uh, the other night. Uh, you're going to probably start to see that then, and then you'll probably let see it you know, drop off for about five, six, seven hours. And then you'll see the market really start to rise going into the, uh, you know, the 6 p.m. hour. Now, obviously, investments that you had risen from that time you will see, you know, maybe it drop off a little bit more, but maybe it's going to be stagnant. And then you'll see the market really rise once everyone gets coins, right? Because think about what's going to happen on Friday for this market to really do well. You're going to have people doing div rivals for the first time, getting those placement games. You're going to have people that are opening up packs, not only from, you know, at midnight, whenever they get the game, but they're also going to get it uh, during the ones to watch team. There's going to be a lot of packs getting ripped open. And no matter what packs are being ripped open, you know, people are going to get coins that they did not have prior to that. Uh, and we'll talk about the ones to watch team, what we think can happen with ones to watches this year, and the trends we might see. But like guys like Limer, guys like Emery Chan, I might get rid of those guys prior to Friday and then buy back. Guys like Sun, guys like Conte, these high rated metas, guys like Umakano, Lozano, you know, um, Allen, Holland, you know, Rashford, Gomez, Bale, these guys might drop a little bit. But like you've seen in the last two days, you've seen the market go up for these cards. And not only go up, but go higher than where they were before that. And that is what you're going to see, right? So you look at this the, on Monday. This is a perfect example of Allen, right? He's like 74, 75K. He then drops off all the way down to about 70 and 69. He then rises and look at where he is right now on a market increase. He's 79.5K. So he's higher than where he was on Monday. And that's what you're going to see from most of these 82 and higher, you know, meta players. And I wouldn't even say 82. I would actually say 83 and higher. 
Um, most of the 82s, I think, will probably not really recover as much. Uh, obviously, it will rebound a little bit, but it won't go up as much as it did prior to that, right? If you see a Marcial drop off, Friday is going to be a good opportunity when the global release starts around the same time as it did the other night. It's going to be a good opportunity to get in on meta cards. It's going to be a good opportunity to get in on starter teams. If you guys want to buy starter teams, uh, that's going to be a good opportunity to get in. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with like price cap players. I got to cost him in depending on the supply that he gets. If he drops off again, that could be an investment opportunity because we've seen him go extinct before. And, you know, if you see drop offs on, you know, Gabriel Jesus, Martial, Dembele, uh, Werner, Bale, Gomez, Rashford, Allen, these types of cards, guys, in my opinion, for the most part, are going to go up after the packs are being ripped open on Friday. Now, guys like Lucas Hernandez, I think a guy like Lucas Hernandez, over the next week or so, as long as you don't have a ton of supply after Friday, you should see the, that card rise. I think that's going to be like a 25k card, uh, especially if Klosterman continues to stay extinct. The demand for this card should should rise, uh, but we'll obviously see what happens with that. That's pretty much a guy like Havertz. If you let it go to like 150-ish, that's not too bad either. Uh, we'll talk about one swatch. Now, I have a weird feeling that one swatch gold cards are going to be very, very over-invested in, like a Nathan Ake, and I really don't like that. Uh, last thing in this video I want to talk about, and don't sell any of your high-rated players, any of like your high-tier metas, the Allens, those kind of cards, don't sell those. You want to sell more of the starter team players. If you guys need a starter team player in the comments, I will let you know if you should sell that or keep it. Some of the stuff that you bought the other night, if you want to take the quench today on it, you could. If it's a starter team player that's rebounding in price, or it's like an 82 and under, that's about 20,000 and under. Yeah, you could probably take the price on that today, buy it back on Friday. That wouldn't be a bad plan, in my opinion. Um, the last thing is, uh, we have a couple of like investments that possibly could happen here. Now, we're going to get Player of the Month on Friday, okay? Uh, Hamas Rodriguez is going to be a guy that's going to get a team week this week. If you could find 3.5k for this card, he's not only going to rise because of Dominic Calvert-Lewin, we could get a one to watch SPC. You know, there's multiple things that this card will rise because of, and he also might get a one to watch where his gold might go out of packs for a week or two. We never really, will not know yet. Uh, another guy is Halstenberg. I think he's going to do pretty well uh, going into tomorrow. If you could find this Halstenberg at like 2.2 and under, that's a SPC dependent player, but that's a really good investment in my opinion. He goes up, you know, with an 82 plus SPC. You know, maybe we get a flashback player for the first time. Maybe we get a one to watch SBC. High chemistry, right? These are the type of cards that are getting Team of the Weeks tomorrow, uh, in my opinion, that I think you should buy their gold cards. A guy like Holland, all right, if he gets an, you know, an inform, his gold card will go up as well, uh, in my opinion. As long as it's not over-invested in, this card should rise. He should go maybe like 120 plus. Uh, we don't obviously have FUD Champions this week, so he's not going to rise as much as you would. But he's st his gold card still will rise when people are building teams on Friday and uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, Sun, like I said, is going to go up in price. That's a card that you're going to want to buy prior to him getting a team of the week, in my opinion. Again, that's not a, that's not a card that I think is going to get overinvested in a ton. Um, other guys, you know, you're looking at like a Grealish as well. His gold is going to go out of packs. Uh, and Lewandowski's gold is also going to go out of packs. So that would be a card... That maybe like 205 to 210 you would buy. And then he'll probably rise a little bit uh, out of packs. Yeah, 205 would be pretty good for this card going into Team of the Week tomorrow. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video today. Make sure you guys do drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new right here. And I'll talk to you guys in videos soon. Peace out.